Today we're going to continue learning how to create websites using Laravel and in this video here we're going to learn how to migrate data inside a database and how to create a model and a controller for a project because right now we learned about routes, we learned how to create new views for our website. If you went into resources inside the views folder, you know, we didn't have views that are actual pages inside the website. But creating a website using Laravel means that you also need to learn about models and controllers and not just views because that is part of the MVC model. So basically in this video here, you're going to learn how to create a model and a controller and how to migrate data inside a database. It's a very important lesson. Let's just say that because some people might start hearing that kind of thing if they're completely new to PHP and be like, oh, okay, let's skip this part. Um, but this is actually a super important tutorial for learning how to actually create stuff using PHP inside a website using Laravel. So what I have in front of me here is actually a completely fresh project. I have nothing except for I just went inside my .env file and I just made sure that it had the right information in here. So, you know, I have the uh, database info, for example, what kind of connection am I using? I'm using MySQL, you know, what is my database name, my username, my password. So going inside our project, let's actually talk about how to uh, create this model and controller in order to get stuff working inside our website. So a model and a controller, what is that? when it comes to creating a website. Some of you may know it already, but there's a lot of beginners watching these videos here. So, you know, kind of need to make sure everyone follows along. Um, basically, right now we have a bunch of views. So at least we have one view inside this uh, freshly installed project here. Inside resources, I have my views. And then you can see I have my welcome page, which is the standard, you know, a freshly installed Laravel project welcome page. I can just go ahead and delete all of this. Just create my own here, so I can say HTML5. So we just have some basic HTML setup. And if we were to go back inside my website, you can see that my front page is no longer going to look like this, but it's going to look like this because I didn't include anything. Flashbang alert, by the way, <laughs> with the bright lights. Um, so going back inside our project here, um, these are our views, which are what we actually see inside our actual website. However, we do also have two other types of files other than views. We have something called a model and we have something called a controller. A model basically handles all the database stuff. So whenever you want to, you know, change the database in any kind of way, the models take care of that particular task. Now, whenever we want to actually interact with, let's say any sort of PHP feature, inside our website, we use something called a controller. So let's say I have a login system in order to actually see the login system, we use a view. Whenever we want to type in some, you know, a username and a password and we click login, something needs to happen. Something needs to actually um, take care of handling whatever interaction we use there. That is going to be the task of the controller. Now, if that interaction includes messing with the database, the controller then says to the model to change the database in whatever kind of way. So there's like three different layers of tasks happening inside a website with the MVC model, which is what Laravel uses. Okay. So with that short explanation, I think it's a good idea just to kind of do it so you can see what exactly I mean. If we were to go inside my website here, make sure you're inside the actual website. So you're inside dashboard, the name of your website, in my case for his website. What you're gonna do is you're gonna write PHP artisan. Then you're gonna say make colon model. And then you're gonna give it the name of your model and controller. And they're gonna have the same name. So Laravel is automatically going to um, create the name for those two files based on what you tell it it should be called. So in this case, let's go and call something like post because maybe I'm creating a posting system for my website. So we need to give it some kind of name, right? So basically we're creating two files that just simply handling a uh, handles posting a specific post inside a page inside our website, for example. So in this case here, we're creating a post model 
and it's automatically going to create a controller called postcontroller.php. And those two files are going to be part of this MVC model specifically for the posting system we're about to create, right? Now, there is something else we can add behind this if we want to, which is actually something I recommend doing. So we're going to say dash M to say to create the model. We're also going to say we want to create a controller. So we're going to write C. And then I also want to tell it to include something called resources. So I'm going to type R. Now resources are going to make sense in just a second. So when I click enter, it is going to create these files for me after a couple of seconds. <laughs> there we go. So it's creating, creating, and there we go. Now, where did it create those files inside our project? Well, if I were to go inside my app, then you can see we have something called models. If I click this one, you can see we have a post.php file. This file we just created just now when we did this stuff. You'll also notice that we have a user.php. This is something that was created when we migrated our info inside the database. Uh, you'll actually notice inside our database, inside the local host here, that we do also have a users table. This is something that is just automatically created with a new Laravel project whenever we just default migrate into this and create these tables here. Um, so it also creates, creates this user.php model file uh, whenever we do that. But the post file, we created ourselves just now for a custom feature we wanted to create inside this website here. So if I click it, you can see that right now we don't really have anything specific inside this file here. We just have a namespace and then we have our class down here, which actually is our model class that says, what do we want to do with the database? Now, the cool thing about Laravel is that it comes with default features or default commands, so to speak, uh, in order to do things with the database. For example, if I want to create a new entry inside my table, let's say I want to create a new post with a title and a message, then it comes with the ability to just simply do that. I don't have to do that by creating the code myself. We can just do it. Same thing comes with updating or deleting other things that we can do just using the built-in features of Laravel. And the reason we can do that is because our post model extends to the default model class that is inside Laravel. And this particular class called model already has these features inside of it. So if I want to create a new post, if I want to delete a post, update a post, something, we have those commands already, even though we did not create anything inside this particular model class here. Like I said, the model takes care of interacting with the database. So if I want to change the database in any kind of way by updating a table or deleting something from a table, we can do that using the model. Right now, the model is empty because we already have some default features that we have pre-created for us by Laravel. I hope that makes sense, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at what we have when it comes to our controllers. So if I go into HTTP, you can see that we have a controllers folder and inside the controllers folder, we have two controllers. We have a default one. This one we did not create. That's just there as a default. But we also have a post controller.php. If I open this one up, you can see that it looks quite a bit different. We do actually have the same namespace that just links to the controllers uh, namespace, which is actually uh, the one we have up here. Then you can see that we also use a model called post. Oh, we know what that is. So if we were to go over here, you can see we have our post. This is the one we just talked about. Um, so the post controller has access to the model, which we also just created and talked about. Now, inside the class, you can see that we have a post control extends controller because it needs to extend to just the default features that comes with creating a controller class. Now, we're not going to get too much into that right now. But what is interesting here is if you go inside the actual class, you can see we have a bunch of resources. There's actually display a listing of the resource, show the form for creating a new resource. Now, where did we hear resource from recently? Well, when we went inside our terminal and said we wanted to create a new model, 
and a controller and a resource at the very end here with the R, we actually autofilled some information inside this particular controller here. So when the controller was created for the post, the public function index, the public function called create, the public function called store, show, edit, update, destroy, were all created in here because we added the R at the end when we created this controller here. So basically just auto filled in all these different methods here for us to use for just simply creating features inside a Laravel website. And as you can see right now, we don't actually have any code inside these different methods down here, but that is something that we're going to fill in to tell it what to do whenever we call upon these methods inside our application. It's, it's not too uh, difficult to understand what they do. You just kind of need to learn it from someone like me telling you what they do. For now, I think we're going to go and leave this episode here because I want to make sure that each episode is a particular subject. So this one is about creating a model and a controller for your Laravel project. And in the next one, we're going to learn how to actually migrate information into the database because right now we have the, the programming files, like we have the model and the controller files, but the database has no changes to it. If I go back inside my database right now, you can see that we still have the same default, you know, tables for our database. Like there's no post table that is going to contain the information for the posts inside this posting system we're about to create. So that is something we're going to learn how to create directly inside our text editor because Laravel also comes with a built-in feature in order to create a migrate database info from directly inside your text editor. So that's something we're going to do in the next one. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one.